Hey there, welcome to Bandit's Keep. I'm Daniel, and in this video we're going to talk about a simplified D20 combat system. So I'm going to do something a little bit different in this one. Uh, I have a podcast as well, link in the description if you're watching this on YouTube, and if you're listening to the podcast, I have a YouTube channel. Um, I just figured this might work for both, so I'm going to record it and put it on the podcast at some point. It'll be on YouTube first, though. In any case, in both cases, there will be a link to the document that we're going to go over here, which is my, what I call single D20 combat system or single 20. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about why I kind of came up the system. I play tested a little bit. I want to get you guys to try it, see if you like it. And this kind of originated from, as you might guess, many times people want to mess with the combat systems, but also people, uh, there's a few things that people talk about. Um, you know, if you're rolling really high on the dice and really low on damage, it doesn't seem to line up in a lot of people's minds, is one thing. And also that um, weapons, at least in my opinion, based on watching, you know, many videos, not being a, a weapons person myself, um, should also affect how you defend yourself. That is, if you have a spear, you are going to be much more likely to hold back, let's say, a, a monster than if you have a knife, right? Because you've got the distance, so I want to factor those things in, but I also want to keep this as simple as possible. So this system does require a little bit of, we'll call it a little bit of uh, upfront legwork like to get all your numbers and stuff. But once you start uh, operating the system, it's very, very fast, very, very fun. And we've we've really liked it. We tested a bunch of times. I, uh, I did this for BXD and D, but I don't see any reason why this couldn't work with any system that uses a D20 and uses armor and such. You may just have to adjust slightly the numbers, and I'll tell you how I came up with the numbers so you can adjust for your system. So, I mean, without further ado, let's get into this. Um, let's see if I do this. There we go. Okay, so like I said, this document will be made available to everybody. I'm going to read from it. Um, and if you want to download it first, you could read along, right? So, uh, single D20 combat. This is a playtest version. And um, this combat system is designed to be used in place of the standard system for BX, or Basic Expert, or OSC, or any of the kind of uh, OSR games is what I was thinking. But, you know, the more I, I look at it, you could certainly use this for 5th edition. So the base mechanic is as follows. Ascending armor class is used in the system, so as, as opposed to descending, you know, in some of the older systems. Armor worn, your dexterity and your weapons increase your armor class. Uh, when making an attack, the player rolls 1d20, Weapon type and ability scores modify this total. That'd be strength or, you know, uh, strength, usually for melee attack. Uh, compare the attack roll to the opponent's AC. If the attack roll is equal to or greater than the opponent's AC, a hit is scored. Damage equals the attack roll minus the defender's AC. If the attack roll and AC are equal, a critical hit occurs. Oops, I realized I was cut off the page. All right, so... So that was the, the very mechanical way to say it. But essentially, you're just rolling 1d20. You're adding up all your bonuses to your attack. You compare it to their AC. You subtract it basically from their AC, and that is the damage. Um, if you get exactly that number, then there's no damage, but a critical occurs, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Okay, so I made a couple changes to this because this is another reason why I did it, was magic users in this system, for me anyways, they can use a dagger, they can use a staff, and they can also use a sling. So I've added some weapons to the magic user. Um, and I made some notes, you know, the, the weapon's defense is based on how long it is, but also how I think it's used in combat. That is, a sword is used very defensively in combat, from my understanding, whereas an axe really isn't something you don't, you know, block and stuff with an axe really um, as much. So a sword is going to be more defensive, let's say, than an axe, even if they are the same length. I also kind of define the swords a little bit to be a little bit more along the lines of what medieval swords are generally called. That is, when people think of two-handed swords in D&D, for some reason they often think of these like giant swords, but in fact I'm basing my two-handed sword on what would be considered the long sword in medieval time, which is about 35 inches long. You use two hands, uh, might be more considered like a bastard sword in AD&D, &D. and if you, the great sword, if you want those giant swords, you would just use the polearm stats. So that's, you know, just to give you an idea of where the, where the weapons fall. Like, um, Alright, so let's get into the calculating armor class. Calculating armor class. Three factors affect players. Uh, armor class, the armor worn, that's the table below. Dexterity, table below. Weapon defense bonus. Uh, weapon defense only affects AC against melee attacks. That is, if you have a sword and you have a defense bonus, that doesn't defend you against arrows. Uh, you know, I just figure in the world that I'm running anyways, you're not going to be blocking arrows with your sword. So if you've got a sword or a spear, it gives you a really great defense bonus against other melee weapons. But if somebody's shooting a bow at you, 
all bets are off there, right? Um, there is a different way to calculate monster attack bonuses. Um, that's in the, the at the end. So again, I listed all this stuff because I'm coming from a BX background where you have descending armor class. So I listed the armor um, for ascending, so it's easier to figure out. I also changed the prices, and that's because armor is very inexpensive um, in in most OSR type games. And in this system, because your armor is so important, I decided to raise the prices. You could do that or not. It really kind of comes down to your system. I decided to do that. Basically, a fighter type rolling really high on their gold at the beginning can afford maybe chainmail armor, but in most cases, they'll be able to afford like leather armor and a shield, which is still pretty darn good in the system. I did change shields a little bit. I've seen this in other systems where your shield is going to give you a bonus of plus three versus melee and plus five versus missiles. That's down here at the bottom. So, you know, that all gets calculated. So if you have a shield, for instance, um, and a sword, you'll be, you know, pretty defensive against both missiles and uh, melee attacks. Making shields more important, because I feel like shields should be much more important than they are in D&D, &D, and I think a lot of people feel that way. Okay, um, I may, I re redid the dex table. Uh, to write it as bonus to the armor class, because I know sometimes people get confused by the fact that <laughs> it'll say, like, minus, and why does that improve, whatever. So I just changed it so that it all lines up. So if you have a 15 dexterity, you'll add one to your armor class, for instance. Okay, define a few things here. Weapon defense bonus. Each weapon will be granted its wield a bonus to attack, and then often a bonus to AC as well. See table below. Fighting with two weapons. because That's a really cool trope, right? Uh, for some weapons can be used offhand, defensively. AC bonus for this use is listed in parentheses on the table below. And I'll give an example. A thief fighting with a short sword, plus four, and their dagger, plus one, would get a total of plus five to their defense. So pretty simple, right? Missile weapons grant no bonus to AC. If you're holding a bow in your hand and you're, you, you're, and you're shooting missiles that round, you've declared, I'm shooting missiles, you'll get no bonus to your AC. Um, that answers the, hopefully answers the question to people who are like, well, what if you have a bow and a shield on your arm? You won't get that shield bonus if you're shooting the missile uh, that round, unless you unless you uh, you win initiative, I guess, right? You, the DM can play that by by ear. I think I would probably allow it if they win initiative because they can, you know, if you're going to shoot an arrow, you're planning on shooting an arrow, you're not blocking. But if you shoot first, then you can bring your shield up. So that's how I would do it. I'm not listing it in here because I like DMs to have the to a chance to do what they want. Let me know in the comments below how you think that would work in your world. Okay, so let's look at our attack bonus. Okay, so calculating attack bonus. Three factors modified attack bonus. I'm calling it tab, which was also the favorite drink of my photography teacher in high school. Uh, the PC's fighting skill, because I feel like that should still matter, right? I want the level to matter. Now, in the case of, let's say, if you're running this in 5th edition, I would use the proficiency bonus here. So, uh, PC's fighting skill their strength for melee or dexterity and uh oh i see i should probably capitalize missile there um and the weapon attack bonus and again monsters calculate differently so now we're going to take a look at fighting skill so i basically took the table that has the progression of the charts and i kind of just recreated it here with a bonus so for instance on first level all your pcs are going to get a plus one but let's say at fourth level the fighters are getting plus three where the Everybody else is still getting plus one, right? And then when they're, let's say, get to like sixth, seventh level, you're going to have some some changes here. The bonuses may see, seem high, but remember, this is uh, all this stuff's getting calculated against really high ACs. Again, you're going to have much higher numbers in this than um, than you would imagine. Well, the first time we rented it, everybody's like, "Oh, it's weird. My AC is like 25." But that's again, people have high attack bonuses, and of course, zero level humans are quite, get no bonus there. Okay, scrolling down. And then I basically went through the weapons. Now, the way I calculated this, and I think this will be um, somewhat important um, if you are figuring in um, for a different system where you want to add weapons, is I pretty much looked at the average damage of the weapon rounded up. So let's say, for instance, there are some exceptions. So like a hand axe, for instance, um, does a D6 damage in BX. So that's 3.5 points of damage on average. So their attack bonus is plus four. So essentially, you could look at it as these things are pretty much doing average damage. Now, there are some exceptions. Um, the Battle Axe, for instance, is a D8, which should be uh, 4.5 or 5 points. But I made it 6 because I just felt like a Battle Axe should do a little bit more damage to compensate for the fact that if we look to the side, a Battle Axe is only giving you plus 1 to your defense. Whereas you look at another D8 weapon, like, like a sword, 
Let's see. Your sword is giving you plus five to your attack, which is which would be the normal, you know, damage. Uh, but it's also giving you plus five to your defense. So the sword is basically um, going to be superior still in a lot of ways. Um, if you are using, um, you know, a sword, you're going to do, a, you're going to be more defensive. The sword's going to be better even if you don't have a shield, let's say. But the battle axe um, is going to be better for other things. Um, it is two-handed, so you can't have a shield there, right? But it does have, if you notice up here, you, I get the double asterisks next to the defense bonus. The battle axe will automatically destroy an opponent's shield if the attack roll beats the AC by four or better. So the battle axe has that advantage of destroying somebody's shield. And remember, shields are very powerful on this. So if you're facing somebody with a shield, it might be worthwhile to use the battle axe because not only are you getting one more bonus to your to your attack, so more likely to hit them, but also you are going to be able to hopefully smash their shields. So weapon choice is going to become very important here. Um, a lance is giving you plus four. Um, and a defense is plus one. A mace is plus four, plus two, etc. And we'll go down the list. So this this is what I put in again. Two handed sword, um, you know, is is slightly better uh, at defending because it's longer than a regular sword, and slightly better at doing damage. Something like a spear, it doesn't do quite as much damage as a sword, but it's better at defending than a sword. So I kind of you know I, I put in what I thought was correct. I people who know more about combat might be able, might change this up for their own table, um, but I think it worked pretty well. Okay, moving on. Now, for missile weapons, I do things a little different, because in BX, all the missile weapons uh, pretty much do a D6, I believe. Um, so what I decided to do was make the damage, or because it's really attack bonus, right? The attack bonus based on range. So if you're in short range with a bow or a crossbow or a, a, a longbow, you're going to um, do, uh, you're going to have more potential to hit them, which will means you're going to be doing more damage. And... Remember that ranges vary, right? So, like a longbow has a longer range, so they will they they will be more deadly than a shortbow, because they're going to be in short range longer and medium range longer. It's not just the end of the range that we're thinking about; it's the the bonuses in between. So, that's how I handled missile weapons. It worked pretty well. And remember, you don't if you're shooting an arrow, you're not going to get a bonus to your uh, to your, uh, your defense at all. All right. So, some other considerations that came up that we kind of worked around. Unarmed and unarmored, I decided that if you have no armor, and this is kind of your hand-to-hand -hand combat, right? So if you have no armor and no weapon, you can add your level to your armor class, and of course your dexterity. So in my example, a third level thief um, is going to... Uh, um, is going to have a 13 base armor class as opposed to 10, right? And, you know, uh, plus dex bonus. So your average like civilian is going to have 10 because they're not... They, they don't have, you know, most people aren't going to have a bonus to dexterity, and they're going to be zero level. But a, but a level character will always have a little bit extra. A critical hit is an interesting thing, because I think a lot of times people think of critical hits as being just really, really, really high, right? You roll a natural 20. But obviously I couldn't do that here. So what I just had to do was make the critical hit when the two numbers match. So if somebody has a 15 armor class and you roll a 15, that's a, that's a critical hit. Um... At that point, you will state what you'd like to happen. You basically can narrate it. Obviously, the DM gets the final call. You can't be like, well, I chop off their head. But it's usually something that's not going to be damaged. It's going to be like knocking them prone, disarming them, breaking their weapon, something like that, right? Shattering their shield is a good one. So but these are things that, that you can do if you score exactly that number. So that's my crit. And here's how I calculate monsters. They're a little bit different. So I have two ways of doing it. Well, the, the, the AC is calculated the same way. You basically look at the, if, if you have Ascending AC, let's say you're the 5th edition, you look at that and then you add to it the, the hit dice of the monster. Um, if you are doing a, a Descending AC system, you, well, if using BX, you're going to subtract their AC from 19. That's kind of how you get your base. So if they have a 6 AC, then they're, they're just 13 to start with, right? So we subtract, so we have that base AC and then you add to it their hit dice. So a... A higher hit dice monster is going to be harder to hit. That usually tracks pretty well in BX. It's not always the case. I mean, sometimes you have something like, I don't know, like an owl bear that doesn't have great armor class. Um, but again, remember, this also counts as kind of like a damage soak, right? It's it's kind of part of the, the way it works. So um, if they've got a high hit die, they're going to be harder to hit. And yes, this will create situations where things cannot be hit. Like things with really high hit dice might not be able to be hit by certain characters. 
you'll need magic weapons or other things to be able to hit them, and that's just the way it'll work. And because of that, I think I might even take away the rule that is like a, like a ghoul low, whatever. I don't know, a ghoul or white, let's say, it needs to be hit by a magic weapon. I might subtract that and just only keep that as a factor for really high hit dice monsters, like let's say a dragon. Okay, so as far as our attack bonus goes, you've got two methods. So I've got like an easy method and a second, and a, a simple method, essentially. Uh, easy and a simple. They're both easy and simple. And I have two different methods. The first one, basically, you look at, uh, you you start with the monster's hit die as their bonus, and then you add to it the, uh, a number based on the damage they do. So let's say that you're fighting a skeleton that is one hit die, and a skeleton does a d6 damage. You'll take one plus four, that's five, and that will be their, their attack bonus, plus five. That's the skeleton's attack bonus. Um, if they have multiples, you know, I've showed you here, and then the other way to do it is just take the monster's attack bow as five plus their hit dice. And so I did that because five is the average of D8, which is kind of, if you look at your dice, you get D4, D6, D8, D10, D12, uh, you know, uh, D8's in the middle. So I took five plus the hit dice. And that's going to make lower powered monsters generally stronger because like something like a kobold that's a, you probably does a D4 damage is, you know, and is one hit die is going to be, you know, instead of plus two, they're going to be plus six. So... Uh, you you know that's fine on the fly, but I've, if you have the time to prepare, I would definitely do this this top method. It's going to work a lot better for you, and that's what I pretty much did when I when I did my monsters. And yeah, I mean you could do it on the fly as well. It's not hard to do the math on the spot, but I think I'd prepare for it if I was going to just some little heads up if you're going to use this system. And then here we go. I've, I actually made a combat example so you can see this in play. I made two of them actually. So for this, I need a sip of coffee. All right, here we go. Get ready for it. <laughs> Combat example one. So this is three goblins against a fifth level fighter. Morgan, fighter level five, fighting skill is plus three because of their level. She's got a strength of 16. She has a dex of 13, so she's plus two to melee attacks, plus one to uh, missile. She has 20 hit points. She's wearing chainmail armor, which has a base AC of 14, and she's using a shield, which adds three or five, depending on melee versus missile. And her sword is, an, is a defense bonus of five and an attack bonus of five. She also has a dagger, which is just on her belt. It's a plus three to attack, or it's plus zero to defense, or plus one if it's if you're dual wielding. So if we look at all those numbers, we're looking at a total AC of 23 when she has a sword and shield, and AC of 18 when she has a dagger and the shield. Because, of course, remember the dagger is only plus three, um... Uh, I'm sorry, the dagger is plus zero defense when when she's not dual wielding, so she loses five off her armor class if she uses a dagger. Her attack bonus with the sword is 10, because that's a sword is plus five. She's got plus three for her level and plus two for the strength. And with the dagger, it is um, eight, because the dagger is plus three to attack, plus three for the level, plus two for her strength. So that's why I say it's good to calculate this ahead of time. When I made pregens for this, I wrote it out just like this. Now, a goblin, I'm not going to read all of these, download the document to look at all of it, but basically the simple method for a goblin would be base six armor class, plus one for the hit die. So that's going to be um, AC 14, right? And, or you could take them armed with a short sword and say um, 13 as the base, and then use the 14, as, uh, the plus four for the short sword as their armor class. So... You've got AC 17, so you see the monsters are going to be tougher when you use this other system in this case. So just keep that in mind, especially low-level monsters are going to be tougher. I calculated out the other goblins here as well, and then let's get into a little bit of combat, just to show you how this works. Okay, round one. And by the way, I actually rolled this stuff. So I always roll these when I do these combats, so it's really fun to see how it works out. So we roll initiative, Morgan got a two, the goblins got a three. Goblin number one attacked with a d20, they roll a... Uh, an 11 plus 4, it's plus 4 because I'm using the uh, the sword as their attack. Which means that they, excuse me, they, they get a 15. That misses. Remember, Morgan's armor class is 23. The goblin number 2, it rolls a 19 plus 4, which is a critical hit. Uh, they choose to disarm her. So now her AC drops to 18 because, again, she doesn't she no longer has the sword, which is giving her 5 to her armor class. Next goblin now moves up to attack, rolls a 13 plus 6, which is 19, which actually now hits. If that other goblin had not disarmed her, that would have missed. Um, so it hits now, and it does one point of damage. Morgan, because she lost her sword, draws her dagger, 
Um, her AC is now 18, as I mentioned above. Her attack bonus is 8. And she attacks Goblin 2, since they're the one that, uh, you know, disarmed her. And she rolls d20, 8, plus 8, 16. She misses. Because that Goblin's armor class is higher. It's uh, Goblin 2's armor class is... Uh, Goblin 2 has a spear, so their armor class is actually 19. So we can see here how this works. It is a little bit more because not every goblin is the same. It actually adds a Even though the system itself is simple in the sense you're just rolling a d20, it adds a lot of flavor, especially to the monsters when they use weapons because every one of these goblins is a little bit different. And your player characters can choose, oh yeah, I want to go after the one with the spear because I know that one's going to be you know, more dangerous to me. Or maybe the one with the spear they know is going to be the hardest one to hit. So they want to go after the one that has a dagger or a battle axe because they're going to be easier to hit. And you can really start to figure out, uh, you know, you can use strategy. It adds a little level of strategy, but it doesn't add a lot of math. So I like the system. Let me know what you guys think. I had this whole combat's written out. I'm not going to read it all. I also give a combat uh, example of the the using the the unarmed and unarmored uh, technique here. Uh, so we can look at this uh, from much different angles. Like I said, I love messing with the, the systems, the, the combat. If you don't know, I mean, if you've gotten this far and you're on the YouTube channel, um, on my podcast, I talk a lot about using chainmail with original Dungeons & Dragons. I've really gotten into that. It's really fun to kind of mess with the combat and see how it works. It becomes a little bit of a different game. Because I think that so much of modern D&D is roll a d20, try to hit a target number, and, and many clones as well. And I think that that just can become a lot very repetitive. So having uh, these little changes in the rules, I think, can be really fun to add a little bit to it. But let me know what you guys think. Do you mess around with the combat systems? Have you ever tried something like this? Do you want to try this? Are you going to download it? Download it and try it with your group. Let me know how it plays out. I would love to know. Um, in any case, if you haven't already, go ahead, subscribe, ring the bell, so you get notifications, all that other good stuff. And I will see you next time. That was not the right button. I will see you next time.